This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this neon text effect using GIMP. And if you'd like to learn more about how GIMP works, be sure to check out the GIMP series, which is a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the major tools and features in GIMP, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. So we'll go ahead and get started here in GIMP. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new document. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to click on New. And I want to size this at 1280 by 720 and then go ahead and click OK. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can see the entire image here. I'm going to hold control and roll down the mouse wheel once like that. And once we've done that, uh, I want to fill in this document here with black. So as you can see here, I have the foreground set to black and the background set to white. I'm just going to go to edit, fill with, ba uh, fill with foreground color or FG color, and that's going to make the background black there. And now I'm going to swap these two around by clicking this double arrow right here so I have the white set as the foreground because I'm going to use that to create some white text here. So I'm going to grab the text tool and I'm going to click on the canvas up here in the upper left corner and I'm just going to create some text. I'm just going to write neon for the sake of this tutorial. You could write whatever you'd like, obviously. And the font I'm using is called Orbitron Heavy. I'm using it sized to 275. You can change that down here. If you click on this, you can just go ahead and pick any font you'd like. Really, any font could work with this, with this sort of style. I would advise against using any kind of thin, cursive script fonts because that may not work as well. I would recommend a heavy, bold, sans font like this. And uh, the spacing right here, I have this set at 23. You're just going to want to put a little bit of spacing between those letters. You don't want them too close together. Uh, they don't have to be super spaced apart like that, but again, you don't want them too close together. Otherwise, the outline we're going to create, uh, the letters will touch each other. So once we've done that, I'm going to go to Layers, and I'm going to click on Crop to Content. And I, then I want to center this up on the page. I'm going to grab the Layers tool, which is right, not the Layers, the Alignment tool, which is right here. I want to make sure I have the relative to set to image, which it should be there by default, but you just make sure it is anyway. Then I want to click on the text so I have it selected, and then I want to center it up on the uh, vertical and horizontal axis like that so it's on the center of the page. And then I will just click off of the alignment tool to get rid of those outlines. I'll click on the move tool. And what I want to do now is I want to take the opacity of this layer and just bring this down really low, almost like about about 2% right there where you see 2. Somewhere thereabouts is pretty good. And then I want to right click on that layer that says neon and I want to go to uh, alpha to selection and it's going to create an outline going around the text there. And once I've done that I want to click on this button that says create a new layer and edit to the image. Click on that. Go ahead and click OK. And then go to edit, stroke selection and I want to choose Four. I want to make this four pixels, so just go ahead and type in four. Mine already says four because I just did this a few minutes ago before I started recording. Go ahead and click stroke, and then we can go to select none. So now we have an outline of our text. And what I want to do now is add a layer mask. So I'm going to right click on that layer that says outline, and I'm going to, uh, or the top, which, whichever is the topmost layer for you, and go to um, add layer mask. And I want to choose black full transparency. Go ahead and click add. And it's gonna you're gonna notice the outline disappears there, but we're gonna put it back by coloring it in with a white brush. So let me click on the paintbrush tool over here. Keyboard shortcut is P. And I want to choose a soft brush like this over here, the softest blurry brush that you see. And I want to make the size, I want to bring the size down so it's about you're gonna notice an outline on the on the on the uh, on the canvas there. Uh, around your cursor indicating how big the brush is. You can manually change that with your bracket keys or you can just use this slider over here. I want to make this about this big. So it's in relation to the letter here, maybe a quarter of the size of the entire first letter there. And once I've done that, I just want to go ahead and click on that corner right there. And if you're going to if you notice part of that outline filled back in. And I'm going to go through and do this at different random parts of the letters as you see here through the rest of our text. I just want to fill in certain areas, not all of it, I just want certain areas to be highlighted like that. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and turn off the visibility of this middle layer here that says neon by clicking the, uh, the eyeball icon there because we only needed that visible so we, could, so we knew where to paint. And once we've done that, we can now fill in the rest of the outline with a lighter uh, treatment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the size of this brush up a lot like that and I'm going to take the opacity and bring it down as well, maybe down to like 15. 
and then just go ahead and put the edge of the brush near the letter and click and you'll notice it starts to fill the letters in but not quite as bright as the uh, the highlights we previously created and that right there that's what we're looking for right there so let me bring down the size of that brush and bring the opacity back up so that it's at hundred percent the next time we go to use it and what I want to do now is right click on this layer and go to apply uh, apply layer mask and that's going to finalize that as it is and I want to create two duplicate copies of this layer right here so I'm going to click on this button that says create a duplicate and add it to the image I'll click that once and if you notice it created a copy right above it I'll click that again and it's going to create another copy above that and what I want to do now is I want to click on this middle copy right here and go to filters blur let me zoom out a little bit so we can see this better again to zoom in and out I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel to move the move the page around you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse around like that I'm gonna to go to filters blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to make this a 2.5 hit enter 2.5 percent blur go ahead and click OK and then where it says opacity I want to take the opacity of that and make that 80 and then I'll go down here to the to the layer beneath that and I'll do the same thing only using different values I'll go to filters blur Gaussian blur and I want to make this 5 so hit 5 and hit enter okay and then I want to take the opacity of this and bring this down to uh, 60 so hit 60 and hit enter and there we go and as you can see it's starting to take effect here one thing I'd like to do is bring out a little more bring out these highlights a little more so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this top layer and then I'm gonna click on create a new layer and edit to the image click OK grab the paintbrush tool and I'm gonna make the size of this brush a little bit smaller and let me zoom in on this I just wanna go ahead and put I just wanna go ahead and paint right where there's highlights maybe one blotch like that in all of the areas where you have high, maybe not in all of them, but most of them. And I'll put that one there. And once I've done that, I want to go to uh, mode where it says layer mode and change that to soft light. And if you notice what that did is it brought out the highlights on that, uh, on that outline a little more. If you notice there, if you toggle the visibility off and on. And what I'm going to do now is now it's time to add some color to this thing. So I'm going to create a new layer again on top of this. Go ahead and click OK. And I want to set the foreground color to a shade of maybe something like a neon pink like that. Doesn't have to be exactly that. Whatever color you think looks good, go ahead and run with that. Click OK. Uh, I'm going to bring the brush, the size of the brush, all the way up like that. Make that really big. Go ahead and click to create some pink blotches on the canvas there over the text. And then I want to change this to, I'm going to go with a shade of blue something like that click OK and add some blue in there as well because I think the pink and the blue really go well to get uh, go well together in the context of a neon effect maybe I'll add another blotch of pink in there there we go and once we've done that I'm going to go to filters blur Gaussian blur and I'm gonna bring this all the way up to, so we have a nice blur a nice smooth blur like that click OK and then what we want to do is where it says mode just change this layer mode to HSL color and if you notice we took the glowing neon text and we added that blurred blue and pink color to it and that right there I think you can call it I think you can call it a day right there but one final effect that I added here is the background so I want to bring out the background a little bit I'm gonna click on the background where it's currently black and I'm gonna to go to colors curves and I want to take this node over here in the bottom left and just bring that up slightly. And if you notice, the black area is going to turn gray. The more you bring that up, the lighter it gets. I don't want it that light. I just want it to be up just a little bit so it's a very, very dark gray like that. And if you notice, once you, once you bring that up and you add gray, you make it gray, you're going to notice some of that neon color spilling into the background there, which is pretty much the effect I'm going for. If you toggle, off the, if you toggle the preview off and on, you'll notice the difference there. And then finally, I'll go to the uh, the blue channel over here, and I'll add. This is completely optional. This is just personal preference. I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Do the same thing with that node right there. Then I'll go ahead and click OK to finalize that. And as you can see, we are finished. We've created our neon text effect using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.